Hello friends, today we will be going to learn about a serious bacterial infection that can cause the painful muscle spasm and can also lead to death. So we will learn about today about the tetanus. So what is this tetanus? So this tetanus basically caused by the gram-positive bacteria that are the anaerobic bacteria which is being called as the Clostridium tetani. And these usually they have the spores and these spores where it is placed, it is placed at the end giving an appearance of the drumstick appearance that is the terminal round spore. So it causes a disease tetanus where there is involvement of the muscles, skeletal muscles are there and they, they go in the spasm. Along with that there is autonomic nervous system also get disturbed. Now this bacteria is ubiquitous in nature that is just present all over in the environment in the soil. So if someone get wounded and it comes in contact with the soil so this bacteria spores are present there and they can enter there, enter in that wound and cause the disease. So the virulence factor of this bacteria are one is the tetanolysin which is basically um, not so important in the pathogenesis of tetanus. Another one is the tetanospasmin which is a tetanus toxin or it is also a neurotoxin. So the main the spasm which is the main significant feature of this disease skeletal muscle spasm basically this toxin is responsible for that and it is if we make toxoid of it like it is a toxin and if we make it toxoid that is it will have only the antigenicity not the virulence so that can be used for the preparation of the vaccine and this toxin is plasmid coded now how it works so this tetanus toxin it binds to the receptor on the motor nerve terminal so there it will bind and then the toxin will get entered so there will be toxin internalization and then it will be transported in the retrograde way to the neuron terminals. There it prevents the release of the inhibitory neurotransmitter. There are certain inhibitory neurotransmitters which prevent the continuous firing of the neurons. So these glycine and GABA, they are the inhibitory neurotransmitter which is very important so that the muscle can relax. But when it prevents the release of this inhibitory neurotransmitter, so they will be continuously firing of this neuron which can lead to the muscle contraction and then it will go into spasm. Now how this bacteria get transmitted or you will get the infection of this bacteria. So this is could be due to the injury. This could be superficial abrasion, punctured wounds or RTA. So when there is an RTA road traffic accident there is very high chances because there is so much crushing of the muscles and this lacerated tissue is there so they all support they are providing an anaerobic condition there so they will support the growth of this anaerobic bacteria then surgery if the surgery is being done but proper asepsis has not been maintained so there could be a risk then neonates so when they are being born and the aseptic practices has not been followed while cutting the umbilical cord or uh, there could be application of some uh, cow dung there could be rituals for that so that can lead to due to these unhygienic practices there could be the condition of tetanus and otitis media then non it is non-infectious so it is not spreading from person to person but basically uh, if there is some wound and you are getting some uh, uh, this bacteria spores are present and if they enter and there it get the condition to germinate these spores will germinate and then they will cause the disease. So the incubation period for this infection is 6 to 10 days. If the incubation period is shorter so the prognosis will be more poorer. So first symptom that is the muscles of the face and the jaw get affected and the first symptom is the locked jaw. What we say that the jaw get locked and now the person is not able to open his jaw. So the muscle pain is there, stiffness, back pain and difficulty in swallowing. In case of the neonates there is difficulty in feeding. 
so there will be painful muscle spasm localized or it could be generalized in the localized it involves the affected limb if it is generalized then there could be painful muscle spasm and it will lead to the descending spastic paralysis so there will be descending pattern and the paralysis will be like that of a spasm that autonomic disturbances can be there lower high blood pressure tachycardia increased tracheal secretion so what could be the complication of this tetanus so one is this you can see this picture where there is proper lock jaw is there and grinning of the facial muscles is there so this is known as a recess sardonicus where you have noticed abnormal sustained spasm of the facial muscle then another complication opposed to tonus position so there is abnormal posture of the body in which what happens all the extensor muscles they are being contracted so all the muscle are in the position of extension and finally there could be uh, that is a more serious complication that respiratory muscles when they go under spell so the person can be dead so this you can see this is the opisthotonus position so you can see all uh, the upper limb lower limb they are all in extensive position now how we can diagnose this tetanus so basically um, main diagnosis is basically clinical and if you have clinically diagnosed it you can start the treatment laboratory diagnosis only for supportive so what we do we take the what sample that is we have to instead of taking swab from the wound we go for the excising the tissue bits so you can uh, try to take out the specimen from depth of the wound and you will notice uh, when you will go for the staining so you will notice gram positive bacilli with spores are there that is present at the terminal or the round spores but just by this you cannot be sure because there are many anaerobic bacteria which having this appearance so you have to go for the culture culture is more reliable than microscopy and if you grow this bacteria so along with that you have to also check for the toxicity because just the mere the presence of the bacteria is not responsible for the disease you have to check whether the toxin which is the main culprit is also being present so with this bacteria is uh, preparing or possessing this toxin then only you can confirm the diagnosis so what media you can take that is a robertson cook meat broth so uh, when you inoculate the sample so the meat particles will turn black and it it will produce the foul odor then plate culture plate blood agar with polymyxin b so you will inoculate the sample incubate at 37 degree for 24 to 48 hours under the anaerobic condition and if this bacteria grow it will produce the swarming growth as we see in case of the proteus similarly it will also produce the swarming growth so this is the uh, pic showing the swarming growth of the clostridium tetani now how you can check the toxin uh, toxicity testing so toxin is important to demonstrate whenever we are establishing the diagnosis and in vivo we can uh, uh, do this testing on the mouse mice that is the mouse inoculation test so you can inoculate the sample serum or the urine now comes to the treatment so when we are treating so first we have to take the history whether the person is vaccinated or not so uh, vaccination that is the you have to immediately give the prepared antibodies that are known as the immunoglobulins so this is known as a tetanus immunoglobulin because this disease is mainly the action is mainly because of the toxin and you have to immediately neutralize the effect of toxin so we can give this tetanus immunoglobulin so there are two type of one is the human variant another is the anti tetanus serum equine so it is equine derived and the difference mainly is basically these equine derived they have more anaphylactic reactions so you have to be careful when you are giving this anti tetanus serum uh, doses are different for each one intramuscular you have to give 
then combined immunization so in the non vaccinated person along with the immunoglobulins which is known as the passive immunization you have to give the tetanus vaccine whole course so both active and passive is needed in one hand you are in one limb you are giving this passive immunization so in the other limb you can give the this active immunization both cannot be given on the same limb so uh, the role of the antibiotics antibiotics basically they are killing the bacteria so in the first 6 hour that could be useful so that uh, they can uh, reduce the load of this bacteria and the toxin has not been released but once the toxin has been released so you have to neutralize the action of toxin so there you can use immunoglobulins but if you want to further prevent the release of toxin so there that can be useful so for that you can give the metronidazole other measures symptomatic treatment that is the endotracheal intubation so if there is any respiratory distress so early tracheostomy may be needed antispasmodic uh, treatment you have to give because there is so much spasm in there then beta blockers to control the sympathetic hyperactivity because there is problem with the autonomic uh, autonomic nervous system also and the wound from where this uh, bacteria has invaded invaded so surgical debridement is needed because you have to clean that whole of the wound properly so that the environment which is helping this bacteria to grow that can be removed and this is very important that you have to keep the patient in a isolation it's not that the disease is being transmitted from one person to other but mainly uh, even the slightest disturbance slightest noise can aggravate the condition of spasm so therefore there should be proper silence should be there in that room then prevention so active immunization this tetanus toxoid is available that has to be given as a part of the vaccination universal measure should you and this is being uh, being pre uh, prepared with the help of these toxins only that is they have been uh, inactivated with the help of this formalin so toxoid preparation has been formed uh, there are different vaccinations available dpt vaccine which is being given all the three combined diphtheria pertussis tetanus then capital t small d so when we are giving to the adults so you have to give full dose of tetanus but diphtheria vaccine dose being reduced and the pentavalent vaccine so primary immunization of children tetanus toxoid three doses of this vaccine is being given 6 week 10 week and 14 week so whether you want to give it as a pentavalent vaccine where you have combined dpt with hip or hpv or it can be in the government schedule you can give as a only dpt also that is a 6 10 and 14 week two booster doses at 16 to 24 weeks and 5 year and two additional doses of tt at 10 year and the 16 years so in case of adult immunization if the primary immunization is not been given so they can be immunized with the uh, full dose of tetanus toxoid and other diphtheria toxoid that is in the due dose so that can be given and the deep intramuscular uh, route that is im route you have to uh, take and if you are giving vaccine to children so it should be antiretroviral aspect of thigh and in case of adults in the dental protective titer if you check it should be more than 0.01 unit per ml so post exposure prophylaxis that is how you have to choose what whether you need immunoglobulin or whether you need vaccination that is depending upon what treatment or uh, what uh, whether you have taken the complete course of this vaccination previously or not so if the complete course of vaccine is taken within the 5 year of this exposure to this bacteria so nothing is required and if it tetanus prone wound that is also doesn't require anything but if it is more than 5 year to less than 10 year then if it is not prone wound then you can give td one dose and if it is prone wound then also give the same but if it is more than 10 years so in the prone wound you have to give the immunoglobulin also and if the incomplete immunization or unknown immunization then also you have to give the immunoglobulin and the complete vaccination the neonatal tetanus so who has described as 
the illness occurring in the child who loses ability to suck and cry between the day 3 and 28 day of life so that is known as the eighth day disease in the neonate neonate we are saying up till 28 day of life so if anyone is having difficulty in sucking and crying and having the severe spat then they are called as neonatal tetanus i have already told you that these are due to the unhygienic practices while delivery when the umbilical cord has not been cut with the asepsis or application of cow dung or maybe by circumcision or by the ear piercing so how we can prevent it so first of all go for the hospital deliveries and they should be attendant deliveries aseptic cleaning clean practices should be followed while uh, while during the deliveries and to the mother two doses of this tetanus vaccination should be given during the second trimester at one month gap then the neonatal tetanus elimination that is the based on the neonatal if how we can check that the it is at a normal range if it is less than one per thousand live birth so that elimination level we have to achieve and how we can that the coverage of the pregnant woman of this vaccination should be more than 90 percent and the attendant delivery should be more than 75 percent so that's all about the tetanus hope you must have learned lot of thing in this tetanus topic if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and if you like it please share it with your friends so that they will also get benefit from this video thank you